It is time. So get yourself ready, says Akita. Buckle up for. I needed my own drum roll. Fan of Punch breakdown number eight. It's Leah McCourt week. It's Leah McCourt week. Surprise, surprise. Get your expectations ready. Put on your glasses, your, uh, your analysis glasses. I don't know. I'm very curious to see what we are getting ourselves into with uh, Miss Leah McCourt, pride of Bellator's UK fighters, I guess. But uh, <laughs> Jimmy, that's Leah McCourt, WTF? I know. And we were talking about the Marina Magnetkina uh, choices potentially, but I'm very, very excited, very curious. So without further ado, Fan of Punch episode. Fan of Punch Breakdown, Blech, excuse me. Number eight, we have Leah McCourt, fresh off the heels of uh, Zhang Wei Li, redux with the elbows. So, full screen it. Boom, boom. Get yourselves ready, everybody. All right. Let me hit the play button. And it's a striking breakdown, too. We know that Leah's known for her grappling, typically, so... That's what makes this all the more exciting. McCourt uses feints to read her opponent and understands how to properly respond to her opponent's actions. See, Ghost points out the things that we don't see. McCourt uses a head and shoulder feint to read her opponent's and positional work to answer the neutral stance circling. McCourt uses a head and shoulder feint. Opponent reacts by circling out towards McCourt's lead hand with a neutral stance. McCourt shortens her stance to reestablish her position quickly as her opponent circles out. McCourt lengthens her stance to prepare to attack while her opponent's position is weakened. McCourt lands a nice right hand because she attacked while her opponent was out of position. Take note that McCourt is in a balanced stance while her opponent is square. Here comes the slow-mo. I was like right to the forehead between the eyes there. McCourt also understands how to use circling as a defensive measure to keep her opponent's offense at bay. McCourt occupies opponent's lead glove to allow for safe circling. McCourt reads that the opponent is advancing. McCourt does not like the distance and her position is so is so she smartly reti retreats. Excuse me, in her position, so she smartly retreats. McCourt sees that the opponent wants to advance. However, she is still readjusting to the new distance in her uh, position is weak. Notice that her back foot is still readjusting the retru retreat. As McCourt enters the neutral stance, she throws out her left hand to occupy the opponent's... I can't... This is hard to see on my other monitor. Sorry. As I say. Lead glove with the red. Uh, she does this because she doesn't want to run into any lead side hooks while circling her right. McCord has established a distance where she's comfortable at. Notice her balanced stance. McCord throws a lead head feint to initiate her offense. Hand feint. Did I say head? Opponent responds with a high guard that makes her plant all the weight on her front foot. This allows McCord to score a near low kick. Keep in mind the position of McCord's pivot foot. While McCourt does score, this aspect of her striking is what she needs to improve on. To generate power in your kicks, you need to pivot your foot outwards in order to open up the high. That The red is so hard. Hold on. <laughs> Let me adjust here. The hips. Okay, to open up the hips. In this case, McCourt keeps her pivot foot pointed at her opponent, which is bad for her knees, but also generates minimum power since her, since her hips are not turning over so... The fence is, what is that? 
I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> Distanced, I believe. <laughs> McCourt exits the pocket and creates enough of a distance to read her opponent's next move. McCourt understands how to use the inside low kick. Oh, Ghost's favorite. McCourt uses her lead hand, feints to set up a naked inside low kick. McCourt uses this slappy jab slash hook hybrid punch not to land, but to force her opponent to react. McCourt used the same preliminary motion as her slap jab slash hook as a feint. Opponent, prepare, opponent prepares for a slap hook slash jab by bracing herself as a high as a high guard with a high guard and planting her feet. McCourt scores an inside low kick while her opponent is defending something that did not come. Unfortunately, this is not a sharp low kick since the since McCourt does not pivot her foot all the way out. McCourt then exits via neutral stance to reset her distance. McCourt also understands how to build off her inside low kick by loading her hip, building off feints and strikes is the key to good striking, not picking and choosing techniques to see if they work. McCourt circles after the inside low kick, uses the hand load as, as a feint to land her jab while the opponent is readjusting to the distance. After landing the inside low kick, McCourt feints with the hook load and shoulder load, knowing her opponent will back up due to the inside low kick to set up her double jab. Very nice. McCourt also used the inside low kick as a counter. Oh, there it is. As her opponent steps in for a jab, McCourt fires the inside low kick, but because she doesn't pivot her foot, McCourt is caught off balance instead of disrupting her opponent's balance. McCourt also knows how to use probes to enter clinches. Yeah, that was good. <clears throat> Probing jabs force a high guard and parry from her opponent. McCourt throws out her rear hand, forcing her opponent to high guard. McCourt lands a lead hook, which allows her to mask her level change. McCourt successfully commits to a level change since her opponent is worried about her strikes. This gives McCourt an open shot to her opponent's hips. All McCourt has to do is run the pipe to complete the takedown. All right, there we are. <clears throat> Leah McCord is still a growing fighter that needs to sharpen her mechanics, but she has very nice tactical ideas in terms of striking. Her tactical ideas and logical movement takes no talent to execute and can help anyone in the world, even if they don't have athletic gifts. We're going full circle here, huh? Let me... Uh... 
why do you think a lot of fighters like to rely on athleticism and deceptive tactics and logical movement? Is it coaching or the fighter themselves? So yeah, there we go for the question that uh, could have been in the mailbag. You are definitely right about that, Ghost. Would have applied and been just fine. But <clears throat> I don't know. I think that's just always been the sports mentality, right? No matter what you're doing, people are going to treat it as athletes being athletic, if that makes sense. Um, <laughs> you know, if the more conditioned you are, all that kind of thing, that's just how they're going to view any type of sport. And of course, I think that starts with coaching. So it's a fine mix, I think. But that mentality is just so ingrained, I think, in in everything where, oh, man, being a big athletic, you're always going to be a whole lot better. But I mean, look at fucking Tim Sylvia, for example, a guy who was able to win, able to win the UFC heavyweight championship, uh, you know, off of skill alone, pretty much. Um, of course, not the best fighter ever, but definitely not the most athletic. And uh, look at Roxy, look at Hamasaki, as you mentioned numerous times. I just think it's a uh, ingrained kind of in society around the world for the most part, but definitely a good mixture so sorry if that's not the quite the most uh straight up answer for you but it's just kind of what i think so let's see what everybody had to say i'm very curious here as we go through <laughs> go back through all the comments because i can't see as i'm doing the doing the narration but rain asks we go from a champion fighter to this never thought mccord had any striking can't be so close-minded as to think only champions can be learned from. Very true, stamina. Jimmy, geez, what the fuck, Ghost? Does your really do you really examine these props to you? <laughs> James, wow, I'm surprised. Never thought McCord is a striker. Yeah, exactly. Uh Marcus Bell, while you're at it, throw some Montana de la Rosa in there. LOL. <laughs> Good to see you, Marcus. Uh, hey, maybe. Don't tempt him. Uh, Sintra, wow, I'm impressed, but why McCourt, though? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, goes, I did this to prove that I can learn from any fighter, just not the champions. There you go. And I think that is a very important lesson to be taken away here, is that there are things to be found and appreciated in everybody. Um, Jimmy says, ooh, there it is. Any fighter with an inside low kick gets featured. <laughs> got that right um that's why i was very excited to see how uh, ghost felt about aya murakami's performance because she was working that inside low kick while the fight was on the feet in deep jewels this past weekend uh zazakita says so what i understand so far is mccord has a decent foundation for striking not a world beater on striking but has good fundamentals and ideas bingo uh, stamina's <laughs> bro do la la <laughs> i know i had the same thought <laughs> alvin says mr ghost fan i'm nicely done this week very refreshing that you broke down a fighter that is still improving yes just like sabina mazo which uh i think that was a good one as well they're all good of course but uh as <laughs> phantom hates the natural athletes <laughs> <laughs> uh, to hell with the genetic genetic lottery winners uh, because i'm fascinated by those who can succeed using smarts and athletics it is it's like human chess it's like human chess isn't it um look at izzy kamaru and Engano. they are so unnaturally athletic gsps skills plus athleticism true but uh he didn't start out so athletic um all champions are athletic interesting debate to be had here all of Izzy's tastic, tactics, I can't read anymore, don't need any athleticism. Anyone can hip faint, shoulder faint, control distance. All right. So you can leave it there as you guys talk amongst yourselves. But uh, that was a Phantom Punch Breakdown, Episode 8, Leah McCourt. Next week is Emmy Fujino week as we get ready for Ryzen 30. We'll be talking about that fight, the big Champ versus champ, eight year in the making rematch between two best friends, Sayaka Hamasaki and Emmy Fujino at Ryzen 30. Emmy's below 150 pound debut. Oh, goodness, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. So that will be next week. Fan of Punch Breakdown, WMA Today podcast episode number 67. Don't miss it. Don't miss any episode, you guys, because we're here every single week. Mondays normally. Today's a special Wednesday day. No fights to break down. Coming up, 
But as I said off the top, don't forget to follow us, like, share, and subscribe at Dre Cruz underscore at Steve K underscore MMA at the Scrap News. We have like five new fucking shows coming to the channel. There's going to be too much content for you to even ask for. Got some other things that are going to be fun and in the works with uh, me and some other hosts. There's a lot going on. It's a great time to be alive. So enjoy the fun. Enjoy the festivities. Enjoy the week of no fights, which is good every now and then, especially for those who have to work and all that. But uh, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah.